Yeah. How y'all doing? I'm Paul Ryan, your host of the Across the Cowboys podcast. If you're new to the show, thank you for joining us. And to our regular listeners, welcome back. With me, as always, is my co-host, the sleepiest co-host in the world, Mike the Pig Crumb. Mike, how are you? Sleepy. That's the word. <laughs> setting up, like I was telling you, setting up these Disney reservations. You know, I got to get up and set the alarm for like 5.57, uh, which is fine if it wasn't for the fact that I was up at 3.52. Mm. and then couldn't go back to sleep that was the real problem so it'll be another adventure we'll see maybe at some point you'll just see me (laughs) if it happens he'll wake me up it's okay i will try to carry on mike my uh my my effort is like the uh dallas cowboys and free agency every once in a while you hit jerron curse but for the most part (laughs) I hear you. I hear you, Mike. Well, before we get into our discussion, I remind the people that they can find you on Twitter, sir. At CD Piglet, guys. Nice and easy. Guys, I'm Paul Ryan. You can find me on Twitter at Paul underscore Ryan 15. Well, Mike, here we are on a Monday. And what that means is Meatless Monday. Tell us what was on the menu today. It was nothing great, unfortunately. Like for dinner, I had like some glazed walnuts, a granola bar, a coffee, because I was trying to make sure I made it through the podcast. And I had uh, like a quesadilla for lunch. I was tired, dude. So I was doing the like the laziest stuff. Like I was mad I didn't have anything already pre-made that didn't have meat. So I was all, son of a bitch. I had to make something all, <laughs> all irritated. Well, So I just made, that's easy. You just shred some cheese, you know, put it in a tortilla, cook it in some oil and butter, fry it up. So the, the Cowboys season hasn't even started and it's already taken that much out of you, huh, Mike? Oh man, it's I want to do another I want to do another article because you know KD is like, hey, let's start picking up our stuff. The boss tells you how you want to get on it, but I'm like, I got two days off was Monday tomorrow, and today I didn't sleep and I had to get up and do all that stuff. And then two, we got two catering orders in the morning. So now I don't have that day off, and I don't know when I'm gonna be off because we gotta I had to go through the catering order, then see what we have left, and then I had to prep for the the rest of the day and the start the next day. So, you know, it's just uh, fun. Busy, 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 sir. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for Sunday. I, I kind of want to get this. It's it's too much question marks, you know, for the team, and I'm just kind of want to see them play. Yeah, I want to see like. Are they going to be competitive with Tampa Bay? You know, is the line how's how's the 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 worries on the line going to affect Dak? Like you know, so I just want to kind of get to it now. I'm ready. Yeah, I hear you there, Mike. Well, this is around the time where we do your uh, 53 man roster projection. I know you kind of teased it on Saturday night there on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and share that with everybody here. If you guys give me a second while I get this uh, while I get this going here. Mike, did you get a lot of slack for your 53-man roster projection? It seemed like a lot of people were kind of, whoa, hold on. Hey, that's like uh, crazy. Don't do that to me right now, dude. <laughs> I don't know why I started doing that. That was weird. That was, that was Inception right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. I made a couple changes to it. Uh, I forgot Damone Clark has to make the team before we put him in the IR. And so I had to switch them. And and then I think they're going to end up keeping James Washington as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, and then uh, move people when they move to IR, bring people back. So I had a couple things. I, I took off Noah Brown, who will be one of those guys you cut and then say, hey, hey, you know, we'll talk to you tomorrow after yeah. we put James Washington on IR. I think the long snapper who we'll discuss later – because of my see my see my special teams long snapper there, it's been LP forever, dude. I'm sorry. It's just it is LP. It just is. It just in in my mind, it's I feel like it's been LP since Jimmy Johnson was there, dude. Like forever. Um, but I took him off of making the 53, and then like um when Clark uh goes to IR, he can come back. Gotcha. And, and, um, uh, I kept it says one QB. Obviously, we're gonna have a backup QB when Tyron goes to IR. That's when Cooper Rush comes back. But 
the couple changes I made, I have, I have Houston going to the uh, practice squad. And the real reason is I don't see how he can make the 46 man. So if he can't be on the 46 man roster, why try to force him into the, to the 53? If somebody picks him up, you'll, you'll live, you know, he had a nice connection with Dak, but it's, no big deal. Uh, I think uh, the reason that I kept Davis on mine is I, Dallas likes to look ahead a lot. And Zeke is a contract they could be trying to get out of. And Tony Pollard is somebody they may not have the money to sign. And so a Davis Rico could be guys they keep on the squad as like a like how they're doing Jake Ferguson. Build them up and then you take over for the more expensive guy mm-hmm. in a year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I uh, – that's the offense and the special teams. Defense had um, Tank, Osa, Gallimore, Armstrong, Williams, Bohana, Golston, Fowler, Hill. Uh, Basham's my final guy. I believe that I had him off on this one. Um, but, yeah, Basham's on on that one. I had him off on this one, but I think he's a guy that – uh, if uh, if the tight end um, or Kelvin Joseph go to IR, Sean McKeon or Kelvin Joseph go to IR, then Basham's a guy, a veteran they could bring right back. You know, kind of tell them, hang out, dude, you'll be back. You know, so one thing yeah. that stuck out to me, Mike, is that you don't have Cooper Rush or Will Greer on this. Making no, the because what will happen is you can you can wave Will Greer, and if somebody picks him up, who cares? Cooper Rush is a veteran that you can cut. And then tell them, hey, we're going to let go of, of Tyron. We're going to put him on IR, and then we'll move you back. We'll sign you back. Mm, okay, so I, you. I was doing a legit, like, 53-man, like, uh, you know, like what they're going to do strategy-wise to get as many people as they can. I also ended up finding a way to get um, uh, Harper on my 53, which – I didn't have on here, but I just, he may go to the practice squad. Man, I like the way he played though. And, and, uh, you know, having a, uh, they had seven linebackers last year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Clark going to IR makes it that they're going to have six and five of them could be active, you know? So I feel like Harper could be either be a special teams guy or be an inactive that they stash on the roster. So, yeah, that was my 53. We'll see how close I get. I have no idea. Yeah, Mike, it's funny because, you know, LP LaDucer, like you said, he's been the long supper for so long. You you just automatically put him on there, but he hasn't been on the roster in, in two years. Who is the long snapper? It's a, a McQuaid, right? Like Jake McQuaid or something like that. Your guess is as good as mine, sir. You wrote you the article. Look it up? Yeah, no worries. It's, you know, you were saying – uh you know, this you were answering some questions that we were going to discuss later on, so we can kind of move past them while you're looking that up. You said it sounded like you there was somebody you um had us as, as a uh, surprising, surprising cut that you might not think makes the final 53. Uh, it is Jake McQuaid. Woohoo! He's the guy that looks like a uh, homeboy with the beard on Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Uh, and then some of the surprise cuts I had were um, uh, Brown and Noah Brown and Basham. But I think they're two guys they could bring back if they want. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there was maneuvers, way they can maneuver. Mm-hmm. I could see them cutting Maher, McQuaid, Brown, Basham. Uh, I don't think they'll cut Anger because he's three-year deal. But I could see a bunch of guys they could uh, they could cut as veterans. And then bring them back after they make IR moves, you know, to stash guys. All right, I got you. I was going to say, when you said uh, Noah Brown and Maher, I'm like, wow, those guys, I mean, Noah Brown sounded like he was going to be a starter in three wide receiver sets. And Maher's been kind of having to put together some, some a good string of practices and, and games. So I was, I was surprised to hear those names. That's why I kept Maher. Even though he'd be a veteran cut, I don't want to risk him going out and somebody's like, no, dude, you've been doing good. We'll give you more money. Don't go back there. Yeah. You know, so I kept Maher on mine. Hey, who's the player you have making the roster that probably won't? Uh, Josh Ball. Um, I had him on our uh, 53 man, but 
it's just as possible that they go out at their the word is they're trying to trade for Inobi or Inobu, something like that from the Jets. Uh not very good either, but I mean he could be better than Josh Ball. He's he's played pretty well in the preseason, but he's been pretty terrible so far in his career. Uh, but I could see them going and getting a veteran tackle and having uh well let's go as the other guy. And just uh, letting ball go and then trying to bring him back to the practice squad. And that's an area though. Would you rather just let them maybe give ball a try or let Walesco give them a try? Let them get some reps until something happened later in the season? Or do you think we should trade for somebody who might not be that much better for might not be much, that much better? I would like them to go get a guy. I don't know about the guy they're choosing to get. Yeah, but I would I mean. like them to go get a guy, whether they keep ball or not. I don't mind them having nine, 10 offensive linemen. So, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't bother me. They could keep ball and, and have him be like the right side tackle. I heard, you know, he supposedly plays it a little bit better and let Walesco be the left side. And then if something happens to somebody like Walesco re-injures himself, then you have a vet that can go over there. Well, who do you think is going to be – who is our week one starting left tackle, Mike? Because I've heard it's going to be Josh Ball. I've heard Tyler Smith. I mean, who do you think it's going to be? I think it's Tyler Smith. It's just time to – you throw him out there, you get it going. Uh, and that's something that Mike McCarthy's done. I mean, in Green Bay, he lost his tackles or one of his tackle like every year the dude was injured, their starter. And they just kind of played through it. And so I expect him to send uh, – to send uh, Tyler Smith out there. <clears throat> and I'll be interested if they end up at some point putting Farniok out at uh, at left guard and letting uh, Connor McGovern kind of play the inside guy because he's gone in a year and let Farniok work with Tyler Smith on that left side. How would you feel about that, that pairing? Uh, they, they need a lot of work, but I mean, you're building for the, if you look at how I think both of them would be better than Terrence Steele were, was <clears throat> back in his rookie year mm -hmm. and they survived, uh, uh, that and scored like 32 points a game. And he was a revolving door his first year. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's, it's a way to say like, yeah, we, we have the defense, we have Dak, we're still trying to get in the playoffs and make a run or get hot or whatever, but really it's building your team up for the 2023 team. Like, let's get these guys a thousand snaps a piece and just get them, get them, you know, where they know what to work on and they can go through in the offseason and do their stuff. And the next year, they're both solid starters. Got you. You know, a lot of people on Twitter, especially, have been talking about moving Zach Martin to left tackle and McGovern to right guard. Uh, do you feel like if, if the Cowboys were to do that, would that line be better than having a healthy tyrant? Okay. Who's a better right guard, Martin or McGovern? Martin. Okay. And who's a better left tackle, Tyron Smith or Zach Martin? Tyron. So... It's not it's not gonna be as good. Now, Martin's close, or maybe at this age, he could be a little bit better than than Tyron. You know, he's one of those rare guys that could he go out to left tackle and be better than the the 31 year old been beat up Tyron Smith? Yes, but not enough different to make up how much better he is at right guard than McGovern is. So I still think they'd be less than because it's Tyron Smith like he's just even if he was if he was half of what he was he'd still be good that's how amazing he's been in his career so well, how, yeah. steep of, how steep of a drop off do you think it would be from Zach Martin to to Connor McGovern oh steep oh god real steep this is Zach Martin this is the best you're talking about the best to a average right guard like, uh, do you want to give Connor McGovern above average? I mean, uh, he looked above average week one against Tampa Bay, didn't he? I, I guess. Did he? We ran for 33 yards. We wouldn't even try to run. We didn't. And, and I don't even know if we yeah, ever ran protection. behind Connor McGovern. Like, the whole time we were just like, no, bro, we're not even going to. We're not going to even try. Like, Yeah, but pass protection was pretty good. 
It was not bad. I mean, it was all right. You have to remember the game plan was get the ball out immediately. Like they they didn't take deep shots. They threw screens galore, quick hitters. Like they 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 played around their offensive line. And credit to them, they did it well. They had the receiving core and the quarterback that they could do that. But it was not it was not the same as if Zach Martin's out there. Like they would have ran a few more times if Zach Martin's in that game. They just they they don't they're not scared of Vita Vea versus Zach Martin. They're like, okay, you beat Zach Martin, you beat Zach Martin. I look orange. <laughs> You've been working on the tan, Mike. <laughs> I not that I know of. I think I'm just so white. Whoa. How does that happen? You gotta you I, have some sleeveless shirts, my friend. I wear short sleeve shirts everywhere, and yeah. uh, that's basically that's what happens. I get super white. <laughs> I'm one to talk. I'm, I'm right there with you, sir. Bro, if I did the ankles, it'd be over. People would just leave. <laughs> People would be like, "That man is not alive. He's a ghost." Right. So you know, Mike, we saw last year when we had some issues with the offensive line. We saw how that affected Dak. When you think about the issues we're going to be having this year, are you more worried about Dak physically or mentally with the with the issues on offensive line? Physically, because uh, a well, couple of things. From a fan perspective, um, Dak Prescott say what say you know his issues last year were were mental, right? Yeah, he's he still was pretty damn good quarterback. He wasn't the elite guy he was before, but he's still pretty damn good. Uh, we don't want him going through that, but physical, if he's injured and can't play, then that's, you know, then your season's over. Um, I believe that if he's playing, he'll be able to survive mentally uh, with what's going on. You know, um, not that, you know, you don't take the stuff that that he may go through serious. I have it in, in my family. I have people... Two in my house that take medicine for depression and 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 things of that nature, and uh, my mother has that and everything. So I understand how imperative mental health can be. But he seems the type that like when when he's on the field he'll go, you know. Yeah. And uh, physically, if he's injured, he can't. So I worry about him getting injured first. But of course, as a person you know, your mental health is like main thing, no, regardless of what it is, you know, the O-line could be spectacular and you still like, you know, hopefully his mental health is good, you know? Well, you know, Mike, well, I think because I, I was going over the show sheet when I was putting it here on the, on the Banisher stream yard. And when I, I was asking my wife, you know, a better phrasing of this. Cause I know mentally health can, that can be taken two different ways. So I guess what I was thinking is his like comp, but maybe what I should have said was his, his confidence. Okay. So what you mean is like, are you more worried about him getting beat up by the offensive line to where he plays poorly because he has a bad shoulder, a bad ankle and he's playing, or are you worried more about mentally? He's like, I better watch this line because I don't trust them and I'm not looking up field and everything. Exactly. That's what I meant. That would be mental then. Yeah. If your quarterback, has to watch the pass rush you're already screwed so yeah that that would be a worry i i believe he's vet enough and he's been through enough with the year of terrence Steele, the Chaz greens you know uh thing with tyron smith and all that i think he's been through enough to where that won't get him that bad but uh it, it's a problem if your quarterback watches the pass rush he's gonna miss a lot of things he's gonna have a lot more turnovers um the hope is that his confidence in his legs uh, and his confidence in the offense are enough to get over the hurdle of a bad offensive line. Agreed, agreed. You know, Mike, when you look at this Cowboys team, do you see the uh, 2015 Cowboys, the 2018 Cowboys, or the 2019 Cowboys? And what I say, you know, just to for the people listening here, like when I think about the 2015 Cowboys, it's like, we saw what we know what happened in 2014 and 2015. We we lost Rome and we had a couple of other injuries and we just had a long drawn out season that we always felt like we were, you know, one win away from making the playoffs and it was was heartbreaking loss after heartbreaking loss. 2018 Cowboys where we had an inconsistent start. We look like we're out of the playoff picture. We make the trade for Amari Cooper. 
and then we go on a nice run to, to uh, win the division and make the playoffs, obviously. Or the 2019 Cowboys where we're excited about the offense, you know, having Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator, and we get off to a strong start, but we kind of implode, you know, I don't think we ever really quit on Garrett, but we implode and we just uh, ha- have a season where expectations were not met after like the, you know, what we saw the first three weeks. I think 2015's out because when you lose your quarterbacks, it's just different. Yeah. So picking between 2018 and 2019, I'm going 2018. And the reason I'm going that way is because I feel like the team is really, really talented and they love their coaches. I mean, ain't a damn person quitting on Dan Quinn, period. Not going to happen. And, uh, and so you're, it's kind of like they're a piece away on offense. We know the defense is good. We know the special teams is good. Even the kicker looks better last year. He, you know, he only missed uh, one, uh, in his nemesis area between 40, 25 and 40. Um, so he looks like he's improved. So it could be a situation where they need to go get their Cooper, whether that's a left tackle, Mm -hmm. a guard center, yeah. A wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, they have one they're one piece away from uh being a real contender. Um, and that pay that player does not have to come from outside the organization. If Tyler Smith is a very good left tackle, we're gonna be a pretty good team. Yeah, he can't be Terrence Steele in his rookie year. He can be Terrence Steele in his second year, which wasn't great, but it was serviceable. Mm-hmm. And they'll be okay. Um, James uh, Tolbert could be the uh, the guy. That's the you know him. Uh, Lamb and Gallup are just killers, and he comes in and is a killer. And then you're going to be hard to stop, even if your O line's not great. You got those three wide receivers again. Last year, with all the issues, they were the number one scoring and yards uh, offense. So. You know, I think it's 2018. I think they're one player away, and it may be internal or via trade, um, via de- uh, development, but they're, I feel like 2018 is the most like this year. How would you feel about an Isaiah Wynn trade? That's the he name of being hurt. tossed around. Yeah. He's, he's hurt all the time. So, I mean, for me, I'm like, okay, so when he gets hurt, then what do we do? Throw Tyler Smith back out there? Like, you know, I don't know. I if if, if I'm going to go that way and go with hurt guy, just give me Fisher. He's coming off an Achilles. He wasn't great last year. He's still not old, old. He can still play. Um, and he's had a year from the Achilles injury. So, you know, he'd be looking to come back strong and playing for his career, basically. And it wouldn't cost you draft capital. So that would be more my move if I was going bet. Then uh, trying to get, you know, you want to trade, go get Denzel Mims for a third, a, a third or fourth round pick. You know, for me, Mike, when you break it down the way that you did, I, I think I would rather have, uh, you know, Tyler Smith get the opportunity, get the reps, and maybe is it Farniok? Is it is it McGovern? Let those guys get get that playing time. And you know, we've got a pretty tough schedule the first four weeks, but I feel like once. You know, Tyler Smith has has gotten those reps and gotten that opportunity. And the second half of the season, we could see a different player. Maybe the guy that you, like you said, is kind of that missing piece from within. From within I think out. that's one thing that that you, we got to survive early. Um, if we can survive and not lose three of the first four and get behind Philly a bunch, you know, and uh, and leave the Rams game at maybe two and three. You know, if you could stay, you know, in that in that three and two, four and one mm-hmm. during that stretch, then yeah. I think you're good because you could build your line together. You know what your defense is. You know you could at least trust your special teams as far as everything, but will the kicker make it? You know, everything else, though. I mean, our punter's a beast, our return guy's a beast. We have a backup return guy who's returned things for touchdowns, you know, so we, we have good units. It's just all of us are wondering, okay, we know Dak's great, but you look at other teams, they don't just like lose two really good star players and in a tackle on a wide receiver and then just do really nothing to Mm -hmm. nothing immediate to, to help them. Like, 
Tyler Smith could be a help, but it's not coming like week one. He's not going to be something that is better than Lyle Collins. Um, and, uh, and Tolbert's not going to be better than Amari Cooper week one. And that's not to count Cedric Wilson and Connor Williams. We're both yeah. starting players on the 12 and five team. And, um, I didn't, I didn't want to re-sign Connor Williams. Don't get me wrong, but, uh, I think a lot of pro- problems Beatus had is that, uh, uh, you know, Connor Williams not going to get a push either. So uh, having a Tyler Smith or a Farniok next to him that can put some beef in there. I, I think that helps, uh, uh, Beatus could it could be. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Mike. Sorry, but could Beatus taking a leap? How, how much could that help? Uh, Farney, Aka McGovern, or Tyler Smith on that left side? If if Beatus could take a leap where he's an above average center, you mm-hmm. know, and you know, the Jason Hargraves, Fletcher Cox, Jordan Davis, Leonard Williams, Jonathan Allen, those guys are gonna are gonna beat. Every Grady Jarrett, they're gonna beat the best. They're gonna yeah. beat Travis Travis Frederick will get beat occasionally by guys that great. We need them to, you know, put some work in on guys that are not them, and then don't let those type of players ruin a game. Mm-hmm. You can get beat a handful of times, but don't not every green. time it's third and two and you need a big play. Yeah. You know, you you got to step up and block every once in a while. So. Yeah, that would be enormous if if Beatus could just be not bad. It, it would help a lot. You know, you mentioned the Eagles, Mike. How much do you think the Eagles' success or lack thereof will will affect this team? Maybe you know Stephen Jones making that Amari type trade. Uh, I think it's enormous because if the Eagles are doing really well and you come out of the gate stumbling, that yeah, could be yeah. a situation where Dan Quinn becomes interim coach. It could be that big of a deal. Mm. And um, and the Eagles do not have a tough schedule early, and they're pretty friggin' loaded. Now, they're built in a weird way where they could be beat a lot of weeks because their quarterback's going to win a certain way, and that's fine. If you're winning that way, that's fine. Your defense is good enough. You can run well enough. Uh, your kicker makes the field goals and stuff. But what if they can't? What if he has to go into throw like Dak did a couple of years ago, where the defense is just not as good as we thought they would be? Like teams have learned to attack the big defensive tackles, you know, uh, on stretch plays, and they're getting run on, and the linebackers aren't good enough. Dean's a rookie; he needs some time, and it 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 makes the back end susceptible. Bradbury's done, you know. All that could happen. It's very possible, and then. And then, uh, you know, it's totally different. But if it works for them and they're really good, it could have a big effect on this year. So let's just say we get to week nine and the Cow- and the uh, the Eagles are, are six and three and the Cowboys are, are four and five, but they're still in the hunt for, for that seventh seed. I mean, do you think they should make the move? What, what are your thoughts there? Four and five. They've played Eagles by that point, right? I believe so, yeah. I think we play the Eagles in week Five or six. And the Eagles would be one of the ones that beat us then? Uh, Yeah. Then, yeah, I'd be I'd be in uh we need to make a move. I would be in a situation where you need to you need to do something. If it's four and five is pretty bad considering our schedule eases up, you know, that means we're losing to division um, and losing every good team we face. It's not like. We're basically only beating the teams we should beat, and that's not good. So, okay, well, let me ask you this, Mike. When you look at the makeup of this team, would we be better suited to sneak in as a as a seven seed and maybe win a playoff game, or would we be better off in the future with a top ten pick heading into the twenty twenty three season? If you have a defense and you have a quarterback, make the playoffs because you could get hot. I mean, uh, Nick Foles and the Eagles did it. You know, they rode a really hot defense that was that could shut people down. Yeah. Quarterback got hot and boom, they win a Super Bowl, you know. So yeah, I I want to make it in the tournament, especially if we know we're gonna win a game. Now we've got that under the young team's belt. Let's see what happens. 
Yeah, that, w- that would be fun to sneak in as a seven seed because anything could happen, especially, you know, if you think about uh, Tyler Smith getting those reps. And if, we, if we're able to sneak into the playoffs as a seven seed, I feel like that means that Tyler Smith has started to play really well. Of course, Dak is slinging it. And, you know, like you said, Tolbert has uh, stepped in as a nice number two or even just a, you know, like 2B to, to, Coop, to Gallup's 2A type of thing. Yeah, I just – I want to get in the playoffs because – I want this young team to get experience. They they have the voted the best roster under 25 in the league. They're going to have a lot of them the next couple of years. Um, they have a, a franchise quarterback, top 10 guy uh, who could get hot. And, uh, and, and then boom, you got a shot in every game. Like if the defense is top five and Dak is clicking, I'm not afraid to face the Rams, Tampa, Green Bay in the playoffs. Like, it's one game. Let's go. Let's see what you got. Look at what the Niners did to us and and Green Bay in Dallas and in Green Bay. So yeah. you never know. Anything can happen, man. Yeah. How, how many wins does this Tyron's injury cost us, Mike? I say three. I took us from 12 and five to nine and eight. That mm. was mine personal. Yeah. But like I said, I'm ready to see him. What if what if Tyler Smith's pretty good? Not nothing great. He's not a you know, rookie of the year or anything, but he's not bad out there. And McGovern is solid at left guard. And Biotis is as at least as improved as he was in the Niners playoff game where he played a pretty damn good game. I, I think he was our highest graded lineman that game or second. Um, you know, if that all happens and the O-line is able to sustain, this team's going to be pretty good. Yeah, I was trying to find I, – I wasn't sure if you had it in your records, Mike, but I was trying to find what I had us going. But three three games sounds about right. I was listening to Bobby Belt on 105.3 The Fan, and he said that he had the Cowboys at 10-7 and seven before the Tyron injury, and then he had him going from flipping it to 7-10 and 10 and missing the playoffs, which, I mean, I, I can see a scenario where that happens, but I don't know. I'm just not – I'm not ready to, to call it a season just yet. Fire, fire everybody if they can't get more than eight games in this schedule – with that defense and Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb and Dalton Schultz, Zach Martin, like they have enough. They shouldn't be no five to eight win team. They they need to be nine to twelve. Like they 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 should be a better team than that. With their quarterback, their defense, their special teams, you know, they they should be they should win a lot of games. All right, Mike. Uh, I'm really excited to hear your answer on this one. It's your view, Mike's views from the sidelines, and a name we haven't heard a lot about this off season. It's it's Kellen Moore. What, if anything, have you learned about Kellen Moore this off season? I'd say that there, and this is gonna be funny to a lot of people who hate because they think they they run too much already, but they've shown a real dedication to the run game, like uh, more than even normal. And I don't mean like short pass game is. I mean like hike it, move people up front gain three or four yards up the middle. And then as games go on, you've done your body punch work and you start to wear them down and get bigger games later in the game, you know, which is the Zeke. That's the Ezekiel Elliott strategy. Give them 20 to 25 carries. And at the 18th to 24th carry is going to be the ones where he really bolsters his average because the defense don't want to catch him. They, they don't want to tackle him. Interesting, man. That's, that's scary to think that we could be more of a run heavy team when you think about the weapons we have on at receiver. Well, you kind of, I, I, with the way the defense is, I think what Dallas is trying to do is shorten games. Mm-hmm. So it may not even be just about running as much as it is taking up the clock at the line of scrimmage, waiting, letting play clocks run down, being more conservative, being able to run if you're up by 10 points to really cut that clock down. Yeah. So that your defense can, your defense and your good quarterback can win you close games, especially if we could trust Maher uh, or as uh, Vach and Skywalker. Maha. <laughs> Maha. I love that. That's so good. Well, what do you think about that strategy, though? Uh, I mean, I'm trying to win games and not get my quarterback killed. And if you got a, I, 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 offensively, you're better passing the ball than you are running the ball for the most part. It's just, especially if you're inefficient running it. And Dallas hasn't shown themselves to hand the ball to an efficient running back more than an inefficient one. Mm-hmm. So 
I get the worry. My counter to that would be the O-line's beat up. There's not as many wide receiver weapons here. Our defense is really good. Our special team's really good. Our return game's really good. Our kicker, if he's accurate 25 to 40, uh, five could be really, really good. So let's let's see if we can start winning some of these Tampa Bay, Green Bay, Rams games by playing, you know, not playing to win by 20 points. Like, we may not have the team built to do that right now. I hear you. All right, Michael, here we are with our top five tonight. And our tonight our uh, top five rankings is going to be our favorite Mexican or Tex-Mex dishes. Mike, start us off with your uh, your fifth on your list. Okay, I still I still have two marked down here. I can't decide which one. I feel like I eat breakfast burritos all the time. It's a burrito, and um, and that fits. And I wanted to get a burrito in there, but I feel like for me, like if I'm talking a Mexican dish, I like flautas more. Mm. And so I am going to say flautas, chicken flautas as my fifth. Oh, number five. That's a good one. Mike, number five on my list. I don't know how how often you eat either of these, but this is kind of like a a staple for me. I'm going with the combination fajitas, steak and chicken fajitas, sir. Fajitas are great. I used to, you know, I used to never eat fajitas because I wouldn't eat peppers and onions. Are you serious? I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat stuff till I was like almost 20. I would, I was pizza and fast food burgers. I wouldn't eat, I wasn't eating vegetables. I wasn't eating, I wouldn't eat like steak. I wouldn't eat chili. I was like the pickiest eater till I got sick and then had to cook. And then I started learning shit and I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. It's like my biggest regret because, of course, my fat ass is going like, I lost like 10 years of eating good food. <laughs> so fat. <laughs> Big Mike, I'll never forget that picture, dude. <laughs> dude, it's 323 pounds, dude, in that picture. I can't imagine you. I can't imagine just like every week when we talk and that's the person I see. That'd be crazy, dude. I'd be, I was hella athletic for how big I was. So I was a problem on the football uh, field and on the basketball court, especially yeah. in the post. Cause if you try to put some big dude against me, I had really quick feet. Like I had spin move, post moves, jump hook. Now, and I wanted the big guy because I was like, Oh good. I, I have no problem. I, you ain't bouncing me around. I'm 323 pounds. And on the other end, you ain't going to guard me. Yeah. I just man, just thinking about it, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. <laughs> Leave my fat picture alone. <laughs> uh, when you showed me that, man, I I couldn't help but laugh, dude. Because you were trying better. to you were for, trying to make me laugh, bro. I look better in the fat picture than I do in the one where I'm 147 pounds. I look like I'm 75 years old in that. It's it's terrifying. Oh man, yeah. I don't. I'm not sure if you showed me that picture. I'll break it out here. Go ahead. Go to the your next uh, dish, and I'll find it rare. So four, this is definitely a little bit more uh, authentic Mexican cuisine, Mike, but it's a calabacita con puerco. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's it's a dish where you use, like, some people use pork chops, or you can use, like, doc, like cubed pork, but it's cubed pork with tomato sauce, mm-hmm. corn, squash, onions, and jalapenos, and zucchini. Fantastic. That sounds amazing. What I, say that where a white guy will understand what the fuck you just said? Um, calabacita is like a Mexican uh, squash, and puerco is pork, of course. So, like cubed pork with squash, corn, zucchini, onions, and jalapenos. You can make it like like a soup if you want, or you can just make it, uh, you know, kind of simmer it. Yeah, well, yeah, you'd want to simmer it, I would think. Yeah, I mean, of course, I was just you know trying to give you a better better idea of what the things you can do with it okay ready this is this is me bro i'm like 20 something right here but look at how look how bad i look in this look let's see if you can see it hold on let me my god dude yeah that's me wow shows how old it is that's a a, a mecca okafor jersey and hat dude you seriously you look like you're about 60 bro i know I was dying. I didn't know. I didn't know I had diabetes. They they told me at like 24 that I was dying of stress. And so that's why I am how I am now. I'm like, oh, because I had to be like, I don't give a shit about anything. 
But uh, it turned out like six years later, I was almost 30 and I found out, well, maybe four and a half years later. And uh, I found out Noah's diabetes and I was like almost dead. Obviously, I was almost dead. My body had been eaten alive. I had drank like at that time I was like drink a 12 pack a day, a soda, a regular soda because I didn't know. So, you know. Yeah, all bad. I told you that one's way worse, huh? Than the dude, that one's like sad, bro. Yeah, I watched these little movies that we did back in the day, and there's one where like I had to take my shirt off, and it shows my spine in this, and it's like curved. I'm like, or so can these can these be found on the infamous YouTube page? Uh, there's you. What's YouTube now? I don't know what that is. <laughs> don't look up Jelly Bean Bliss. Yeah, don't look up a dropped head production, or uh, I think some of them are on my actual CD Piglet page, but most of them are under my best friend's. Uh, you know, he edited them. I wrote them. Yeah, and then he turned them into he edited them, turned them into movies and stuff. He did an amazing job for dudes that like can't act at like horrible actors, but he would do all the music editing and the uh, and the and. It was he's incredible for Love what Jelly he took and what he made. Yeah. Jelly Bean <laughs> Bliss, Mike's room. And what's the one with the mask? Duplicatus. Love that one too. Because it's like duplicatus. Yeah. You know, you put it on, it duplicates. Uh I also what else? There's us yeah, before there's, us. There's a there's a bunch of them on there. Yeah, I haven't I haven't uh checked out that page in a while. I might have to go back and, and re- go re-watch. back and see me all dying. <laughs> all right, my 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 calabacito con puerco was number four for me. What's number four on your list? Mine's a little bit more white uh, nachos, and oh, dude, yeah, I was gonna pick a specific type of nachos, but screw that. Get whatever nachos you want. You want to do not lobster nachos from Lamplight? Great. You want to oh, do wow. chicken nachos? You want to do steak nachos? Ground beef, chili verde. Put whatever the hell you want on them. Just give me tortilla chips and cheese. And guacamole and sour cream and tomatoes and then some salsa and then throw whatever protein you want on there. I think we had this conversation before, but you you prefer the uh, melted cheese over queso like on your nachos, right? Like where they're all individual. I was stacked. three, I was I was once 300 pounds, Paul. <laughs> I prefer all of the above. <laughs> well, Mike, Mike to as of today. Um, I would probably, I would do the shredded cheese, but I don't care. I eat, I eat any, it's not like I'm like, Oh, the queso cheese. No, hell no. Put that on there too. Double yeah, it up. Of course. However you want to do it. I eat it. So That's what's your I favorite nachos? Five. Well, what are your favorite nachos? If you're getting nachos, what are you going to get? Uh, I like, I would probably go black beans, kidney beans, uh, jack and cheddar cheese, guacamole, sour cream, green salsa, and chicken. But the chicken can't just be no, like, cut up what, like, you got to, like, make it. Like, chili verde chicken. Uh, 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 if you did chicken instead of pork, I would love that. That would be great. I do, when I was on my diet, I would do chili verde as white meat chicken because it was no points to have white meat chicken. And then everything to make a verde sauce is all vegetables, roasted vegetables and everything. So all basically your points are the oil you roast the vegetables with. So oh, I wow. used to eat that all the time. I would eat uh, uh, chicken chili verde, white meat chicken chili verde. Sounds good. Sounds delicious. All right, Michael, what's number three on your list? Number three, I had it today. Cheese quesadilla. I mm. honestly, I don't need... Anything in it, it could. I like autobata, uh, uh, which I say that very white. I know, whatever, but I like that in there, and I like carnitas. But I don't even need that. Long as there's cheese on the outside of the tortilla to make it crisp, that's mine. I'm I'm all about the cheese in my quesadilla. I'm very surprised at your list. I thought she'd have some more. Uh, I guess fancy. I can't think of a better word. Like fancier dishes, especially for grow being raised and born in California. Uh, yeah, I have. I mean, it's the thing is, is I could go like specific, like this type of tacos, but like, bro, like I do these cauliflower tacos where you put the cauliflower in buttermilk and hot sauce and marinate them, take them out, put them in egg white, 
and then dress them in this uh, spicy breading and fry them. And they're served with like a sour cream, hot sauce, and some cheese, like queso fresco, mm -hmm. and a grilled tortilla. And they're they're incredible. But it's like, okay, I got seven other taco recipes. Just put fucking tacos up there. Yeah, I got you. You know, but I, I have specific, like two specific dishes for my final two. All right. Mike, number three on my list, I'm going with Mexican breakfast. But to be more specific, huevos a la Mexicana. But it has to have, you know, of course, the refried beans, the homemade flour tortillas. And then I prefer the, uh, like, the stewed potatoes. I don't like the fried ones that you'll get at some places. But the stewed with the onions and the uh, stewed tomatoes and jalapeno, I like those. I like those potatoes with it. Why not corn tortillas over? I've always been. Here's my thing. I've always been flours for burritos. Corn is for enchiladas and tacos. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I mean, I, 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 I guess when I have with, I like the way the flour tastes more with the beans for whatever reason. I think it's a better compliment just to the, the breakfast overall, but I love a good corn tortilla. I mean, I eat corn tortillas more often than not with most tacos, but for some reason with Mexican breakfast, I just like, I like, uh, I prefer a homemade flour tortilla. I like, it has to be homemade though. I don't, I don't like the packaged flour tortillas, you know? I feel you. That's fair. All right, Mike, number two on my list. I'm going with, this is very specific. This is my Nana's tacos. This is my first, uh, no, not my first uh, Tex-Mex inspired dish, but hers, was, it's like a ground beef. She mixed, she would make ground beef and she'd make queso, which was like, wrote, or like her, her hot sauce, Velveeta. She'd make a little special queso, then mix that with the ground beef, put it in a corn tortilla and then fry it and then serve it like a gringo taco with lettuce and tomato. So my Nana's tacos, number two on my list. Bro, and, and that's the thing. When you say, what do you prefer? Like, if there's anybody that's like, oh, no, I don't want the Velveeta melted down friggin', you're lost your mind. That's why I'm like, give me either. You want to yeah. put shredded cheese on it? Great. You want to, like, cook down Velveeta and with, like, some ground mustard, hot sauce, uh, and just cook that down with some, like, cream or milk and turn that into a sauce? Give me it. All yes. day. Yes. I love it even in the crock pot, dude. Yes. Hell yeah. I'm gonna make I'm doing it. I gotta make case it. tonight. I'm gonna not tonight. I already oh, ate God. everything I need because I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> right, right. I got everything done before, had coffee and everything. And then after this, I'll try to like play one game of Madden to like okay, wind down, and then I gotta go to bed because I gotta be up at 6 a.m. Mm. All right, Mike. Number two on your list. Number two. Uh, chicken enchiladas, specifically mole. Now, I love red sauce enchiladas. I love green sauce enchiladas. As a person who has cooked for many, 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 many years, many years, just buy the canned shit. Don't, don't try to do your own, uh, especially the red. Just dry chilies with some shit. You know what happens after you toast the chilies and blend it up and do all that? It tastes like the canned red one, and you wasted all that fucking time doing that. Just buy the red and green stuff. Mole you should make or go get it somewhere that makes it homemade. Mm -hmm. um, mine was, uh, uh, it was Plaza Day something, but it's it's closed down here in Fresno now. But it, it they were, because they were a little sweet. They were so good. Mm. Dude, I, I have to admit, man, I hate mole sauce. I've tried to like it, tried it at so many different places. Tried it homemade, tried it at a taqueria, tried it at a restaurant. Just never liked it, dude. Did you ever get one that was that that was sweet? Like you legit tasted the sweetness even over the heat? Um no. Find that. Okay. Because it's 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 just you it just works with like the cooling cheese, mm -hmm. the queso fresco. And, and, you know, they should make the chicken a little spicy. It just works so good. All right. I'll try it, man. I'll take your word for it. Right? If I trust anybody with food, it's you. That's, that's a good decision. I'm good at this thing. I do this well. It's the one thing I'm, and we're start our business starting to pick up a little knock on wood on that. The business starting to pick up now that um, I'm not going to get into politics, but some stuff got done. Um, that's, that seems to be helping people with money and people are coming in. So, here in Fresno, California, at least, I'm not talking any kind of political mess. Just here in Fresno, California, 
businesses seem to be picking up and and it's really helping ours so i'm i'm happy about it i right, lo- love to hear that mike all right here we are number one mike what's number one on your list pico de gallo crispy uh chili verde tacos they're they're the best thing i freaking i can eat them every day it's they make their chili verde homemade they take a tortilla fry it you know where it's like this but it's fried so it's crunchy so you have to eat it there never take it home never get it to go crunchy it's chili verde it's sour cream it's lettuce it's cheese it's tomatoes and inside that fried crispy shell it's absolute. and i put the green sauce on it for a little bit of spice sounds delicious all right number one on my list mike i'm going with i don't know how you feel about this this but picadillo picadillo okay i know what this is does uh does picadillo have plantains Mm -mm. Uh, there's so many variations of it though i've made it i i absolutely know i have but give me a breakdown please really quick all right ground beef onions potatoes then of course all your seasonings for that type of like for a mexican dish and i like to make mine um with a jalapeno like you know you kind of like put some water you simmer that to you just simmer it you get the jalapeno nice and soft and uh typically it's served with um refried beans and fideo or just refried beans okay so here's what i did i have made a cuban picadillo and the potatoes were replaced by plantains they're on my instagram same name okay. cd piglet they're on there somewhere and they were inspired by uh now uh rest in peace uh carlos ruiz i believe he did it on guys ranch kitchen and I took it and made something like that. So that's where I remember it. I did a Cuban picadillo uh, yeah. once. I cooked it with plantains. It was friggin' phenomenal. Uh, man, that name sounds familiar. You said RIP, so I've got to look this up. So she passed away? Yeah, Chef Ruiz passed here three years ago, I think now. Two, three years ago. I've got to see this. what this man looks like. Oh, He's okay. the wow. Carl the Cuban. Yeah. Yeah, he's been on. He was he was a triple G, like the ultimate champion of that. He always won. He one time, hey, get this. So I'm talking to him one time online, right? And I tell him, I told him I'm trying to figure out how to do Chinese noodles right, you know? Mm-hmm. So this man tells me, I'm dead serious. He goes, Bro, you live in Fresno, California. Go to Shanghai and get the Chinese noodles there. My neighbor worked at Shanghai. I got them all the time. That's why I wanted to make them. Just the fact that this East Coast chef knew about, because, you know, Guy is in California. And people literally come from Santa Barbara, San Francisco. They make a trip down to get the noodles from Shanghai and take them back up and then heat them up, you know, there. And so he knew that. And I have it in my phone to this day saved that tweet exchange we had where he's like bro just go to shanghai you don't need to do it yourself you have shanghai i was like good point i get that like twice a week so very cool man that's really cool it's always nice to have an exchange with somebody who's you know who we think is famous but he he was awesome i have a few of them where like i made stuff for a super bowl and he saw it on there and was like he would call it ruizing and he goes ruizing uh, approved on one of my posts of food, and I was like, that's awesome. That's really freaking cool. Look at us. Look at the time. Look at us, Paul. Under an hour, sir. You got to be this sleepy more often, I guess. I know. We ran through it. We killed it. Wait, It ain't going to be like that a lot. We got a season coming up, and people are going to want to hear us, you know. So we'll we'll go into more detail. But this one we knocked out in under an hour. Yeah, yeah. surprise to nobody but the food discussion was the one where we got in depth of course surprise to literally especially right now there's not enough going on football wise you know we got it everybody's waiting for this 53 man roster that's it until yeah. we get that it's just wait and see what's the closest you've gotten on the 53 man roster like 46 35 i have gotten 51 once this oh, was wow. in I'll find the year because I don't want to take too long thinking about it and get us over the hour. Yeah, but yeah, I got yeah. 51 of 53. I missed two guys once. Holy cow. 
Well, man, that's that's awesome. Well, Mike, I know you're tired, brother. I know you got an early morning. So while we're getting you out of here, remind the people they can find you on Twitter, sir. C D Piglet. Nice and easy. Letter C, letter D, Piglet. I need to put the at like yours. You're smart. Yeah. Well, I, I like the way you got it set up, too. But, guys, I'm Paul Ryan. You can find me on Twitter at Paul underscore Ryan 15. We appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you guys next week.